Hey everyone and welcome to Storytime, my name is Jake and today we are going to be looking at the subreddit r slash pro revenge where people tell us their best stories and when they got revenge on someone or something they didn't like. If you're new around here please do hit subscribe down below so that you never miss out on another video but for now let's sit back relax and enjoy some pro revenge stories. Oh did you like your position in the committee? Sorry it's mine now. The necessary backstory. My guilty pleasure is karaoke. I love going to local bars when there's a karaoke night on. I have a musical background and I studied music at Cambridge University in the UK, graduating with first class honours for my bachelor's degree and my masters in music performance. I also trained at the Royal Academy for a while. I specialised in music theory and I am now a teacher in a local college. I am primarily a classical guitarist but I am also grade 8 standard on piano and flute. I am also lucky to be blessed with perfect pitch. I have never studied vocals or ever had any singing lessons, but my musical aptitude and perfect pitch makes me a decent singer and above the average ability of most people who get up to sing at a karaoke. I don't go to karaoke to show off or anything, I enjoy listening to everyone, good and bad, and just generally having a laugh with my friends. I met the DJs Kate and Peter, a husband and wife DJ team from the next town over, about 8 years ago when I started going to a weekly karaoke at a local bar, and over time we have become close friends. I follow them to every bar they go to for karaoke, help them out with their company social media pages and act as unofficial tech support. They also occasionally give me some DJ work when they are double booked, however despite this I am not an employee of the company, I just like to help out and I do not get paid for my tech work and I make a flat rate of £100 for every gig they give me. They get the surplus. This is important later. The story. So about three years ago, Kate and Peter were booked for a recurring monthly karaoke at a members only social club in a town about 15 miles away. I already knew a lot of the people who were members there from karaoke at other bars they had come to, specifically a bar which was just up the road from this club. One of these people, Bill, was on the committee for the club. He was a good friend of mine so I had a chat with him and made sure that although I was not a member, at this point I was okay to come to the karaoke once a month. At the first karaoke night at the club, I met Jane and Robert. I learned that Jane was the entertainment manager on the committee and Robert was a major narcissist who thought he was Elvis Presley reincarnated with an ego the size of Europe. He only sings Elvis songs and tries to do the dance moves to match. He even has at least 5 full blown Elvis costumes he wears, even on a casual basis. He thought the sun shines where it usually doesn't and was the best singer in the country. He really wasn't, he was really quite bad and I quickly learned that he instantly disliked anyone who was a better singer than him. He was really close to Jane and she would do anything he said. Initially they were both nice to me but after I sang they would refuse to talk to me despite going out of my way to talk to them every month and I never showed any hostility towards them. This went on for a year, bear in mind that Jane and Robert are in their mid to late 60s. I'm in my early 30s and it was like dealing with a couple of children. I swear the students I teach are more mature than they'll ever be. In the end I gave up trying to be nice and salvaged some sort of friendship and only spoke to them when I had to. Over the course of the year Robert would instruct Jane to stop certain people singing. He wouldn't allow anyone else to sing Elvis songs, there's hundreds on the hard drive FFS and even tried to get people banned from the karaoke and the club. They had a major falling out with my friend Bill, he sang an Elvis song without Robert's permission which was escalated to the head of the committee but no action taken as there was a lack of evidence, despite several witness statements in Bill's favour. At this point they had never done anything like this towards me so I wouldn't get involved in any of the disputes. 
They really angered a lot of people, but there wasn't much that could be done about it as the committee would always say there was a lack of evidence. Suddenly, the karaoke stopped. Jane didn't rebook Peter and Kate. We later learned that Robert was moaning to Jane over the bill incident and demanded that the karaoke stopped. At this point, I had made many friends at the club and had also started going to their monthly quiz nights, so I decided to become a full paying member. I am a helpful and kind person by nature, and I am always more than happy to give my input if I can help. I got involved in the quizzes, I even wrote and ran a few for free and passed on details of my musical connections for when they wanted live music, which was at a reduced rate for the club as the booking had essentially come through me and my friends and connections. I helped to update their till systems, install Wi-Fi, made posters and helped promote events at the club on the internet and social media, all for free. The management loved me. Everyone was disappointed at the karaoke being cancelled, as it was always busy and everyone had a great time despite Jane and Robert. It took us a few weeks to find out the truth of why it was cancelled and there was a minor uproar, which I did not get involved in. However, Jane stood her ground and nothing could be done because she was the entertainment manager, so the book stopped with her. Around 6 months later, Jane decided to start the karaoke nights again. I assume Robert was fed up of not being able to show off and booked Kate and Peter again for the following month. Everyone was very happy, as the karaoke was always popular, brought in new members and good revenue for the club. So the karaoke night rolls around, and by the end of the night, I realised that my last two turns were skipped and Robert sang the most songs. Suspecting something fishy, the next day I went round to Kate and Peter's house for coffee to come find out what, if anything, had happened. Lo and behold, my suspicions were right. Kate told me that about halfway through the night, Jane had approached them and said, Can you not let OP sing anymore? She's really annoying everyone and we don't want professional singers putting people off and she's making people leave. I was angry. I wasn't angry at Kate and Peter, they had to comply with what Jane said because she had threatened non-payment and no more work if they didn't. They did what they had to do. After being a regular at this club, a full paying member for nearly a year and all of the work I had put into helping the place for free, I couldn't believe their audacity and I was annoyed that they couldn't even say it to my face. So the next day, I went to the club knowing Jane would be there in order to confront her. I hate confrontation and I'm usually pretty easy going, but I wasn't going to be singled out and lied about and I've always been the type of person that if you've got something to say or a problem with me, come and talk to me and we'll try and work it out. I really can't stand being talked about behind my back. Before talking to Jane, I went and spoke to a few of my friends who were there. I needed to know if they had thought or said I was annoying them with my presence at the karaoke, and if any of them had said anything to Jane or Robert before I confronted to her, so I could get my facts straight. They were shocked and I learned that the only one moaning about me was Robert. It seemed that I was next on his hit list, so I approached Jane. This is how the conversation went down to the best of my memory. Hi Jane, can I talk to you for a minute? Ah, oh, I guess so, but I'm very busy. I just want to know why you and Robert stopped me from singing at the karaoke the other night. Everyone was getting annoyed with you and we don't want professional singers at the karaoke. And it's not fair anyway because you work for Kate and Peter. But I'm not a professional singer Jane. As you know, I'm a guitarist and I'm a teacher. I have never made a living from singing, nor have I ever been employed by Kate and Peter. I spoke to everyone and no one else was annoyed with me. It was literally just Robert. No one left because of me either. That's all lies. You're just being an entitled brat. You think that I'm the entitled one? And you're saying that I don't know what my own job is and that everyone else here is a liar too? 
You should know that you're not welcome here. No one likes you. You should just leave and stay away. I'm going to talk to management and get you banned. Okay, Jane, you do that. This is obviously a lost cause and fruitless conversation. You are the lost cause. All you've done is upset people since you came here. At this point, I left, more angry than I was before, and started plotting my revenge. Thankfully, I wasn't banned because I was on good terms with management after all the work I had done for them. I knew my plan would take time to pull off, and this may seem like a really petty reason for revenge to you, but nearly everyone at the club had suffered at the hands of Jane and Robert at some point, some worse than me, and in my opinion, they needed to get their comeuppance. They needed to know that the club did not revolve around them and that they can't treat people this way. I doubted anyone else would go up against them. I was willing to be in it until the bitter end, and I got way more than I had hoped for. The Revenge I started going to the club more regularly than before. I needed to make friends with everyone for my end move, and people loved to talk and gossip. I wanted all the dirt on Jane and Robert that I could get my hands on. I heard rumours that Robert was acting as an unlicensed agent for bands and singers, that Jill was in on it, and they were both taking a cut of the money that the band was being paid by the club to perform. This is very morally wrong and most likely illegal, but if it was true, this was huge. Over the course of 10 months or so, I set up multiple sting operations, using my contacts in music circles to gather evidence of this. It turned out that the rumours were indeed true. Jane would tell the club that the band was charging £250, but pay them £200, keeping £50 for herself, and then Robert would charge them a £50 agent fee for the gig. After some digging online, I found out that Robert had even set up a fake agency company in order to look legit. I invested in a hidden spy camera, asked my friends to record their meetings with Robert and Jane, as well as record all phone calls, and to forward all emails sent between them. In the end, I had a big ring binder full of evidence of this shady operation. They were booking performers three times a week. Bear in mind that events such as Christmas and New Year's, they charged upwards of £500 per band and Jane had been the entertainment manager for 20 years at this point, with Robert as her right-hand man. That's at least £150 a week, if not more. I estimated that they made roughly £2,000 a year from this, so over 20 years, that's at least £40,000 of undeclared income. I also went around my friends at the club that had suffered injustice at the hands of Jane and Robert. In total, I gathered 12 statements and over 50 signatures on a petition I created to remove Jane from her position as entertainment manager and to remove all of Robert's influence over entertainment bookings. It was finally time to put my plan into action. I went straight to the committee head with the statements, petition and the evidence of their fake agency scam that I had gathered. He took the file and went through it that evening. Although I wasn't sure if he was on Jane and Robert's side, I had three encrypted digital copies in various places just in case he destroyed it. He called me the next day and I was requested to be at the next committee meeting in two weeks time as an independent witness, where they would confront Jane and Robert on their actions and also if I could give a copy of my evidence to management. With pleasure. The day of the committee meeting came and it was glorious. At first, they both denied everything, but when faced with the hard evidence I had gathered, they knew they couldn't get out of it. Upon seeing the statements and petition, Jane broke down and cried. Robert looked deflated and defeated. The committee voted unanimously not just to remove Jane from her position as entertainment manager, they voted to remove her from the committee altogether. 
The committee head told them that they would be seeking legal advice to try and recover all the money they stole from the club and to find out whether they could press charges against them for theft and fraud. As a final kick in the teeth, the management decided to revoke their memberships and banned both Jane and Robert from the club premises permanently and indefinitely. My hard work over 10 months paid off in spades, and within an hour, I had brought their world crashing down around them. I'm normally a really empathetic person, but they brought this on themselves, and I have no shred of sympathy at all. But I wasn't done. I also took my evidence of the fake agency scam and, along with the management and committee of the club, reported both of them to the tax office for undeclared income and the police for fraud. It took them a good few months to investigate and it also transpired that Robert was regularly traveling abroad to Europe buying copious amounts of tobacco, cigarettes and alcohol, smuggling them back into the country, failing to pay the duty tax, and selling them for a profit. The club were able to press charges against Jane and Robert for theft and fraud, and sue them for the money they stole by skimming from the banned fees. The tax office also took them to court for undeclared income, unpaid income tax, and in Robert's case, unpaid duty tax and unlawful sale of restricted goods. They were found guilty of all charges, each sentenced to suspended jail time and ordered to repay the unpaid tax on their undeclared income, the unpaid duty and repay the club the money they stole as well as over £1,000 in compensation. The last I heard, they had both declared bankruptcy and had their cars, houses and other valuables repossessed by the court to be auctioned off to pay back the money they owe. Finally, when I said I needed to make friends with pretty much everyone at the club for my end move, we just had the committee elections a couple of months ago and I was elected as entertainment manager with 96% of the vote. I'm loving my new role and everyone is happy with the bands I'm booking and the entertainment I've put in place so far. I also have a monthly discussion meeting with any members who want to turn up and ask for their input and suggestions and what they want to have going on at the club, something which never happened under Jane and Robert's dictatorship. Right at the start of that, I was kind of getting some vibes of r slash humble brag, you know, kind of like, oh, I'm really good. But then I realized that it was probably just context and you kind of needed to say that. But yeah, I really enjoyed the story. Hey everyone, I hope you all had a really good day and that you enjoyed that video. If you want to check out some other videos, then click on screen right now or check out the playlist down below. If you enjoyed that video, then please do leave a like. And if you want to submit your own stories, then you can do so by joining the Discord in the top link in the description. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.